You ready to do this, Matt? Yes, sir. Punch it, Chewy. Welcome, super friends, to the Fortress of Nerditude podcast, a safe place to talk about all things in nerd and pop culture. I'm Spencer Stapleton, and my co-pilot is Matt Shaw. We're two nerds that just refuse to grow up. Thank you for joining us. This is episode 175. We release every Thursday morning. You can find us on the website, fortofnerd.com. We have links to iTunes, Google Music, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and everywhere podcasts are available. Stop by and relax a while. If you like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button and get us automatically each and every week in your ear holes. Matt, it's another week of isolation, quarantine, social distancing. How are you doing with your six feet bubble? You know, just fine. I'm getting used to it. Now I like panic when I'm watching TV and I see people like at an event, like a concert or a sporting event and I go they're they're too close. They're too close. Someone's going to get sick. So I'm like I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see how we ease back into life. I don't know if it'll be as easy as flipping a switch. I think for a lot of people it's going to be really difficult with the I don't know. It's yeah, weird. I guess it all depend I guess it all depends on how you look at things. So like right now like we're just staying in our house. We're not going out places. We're not doing things. So the whole like stay six feet away. I mean, I got two little kids. There's no six feet bubble inside my house. Right. But of course we go outside, you know, for a walk or whatever. And we see a a neighbor walking their dog, you know, I'm, I'm giving them a little extra, you know, distance. Exactly. It's little things like that, that we think about now because that's our life. Our life was changed so dramatically, so quickly. That it's, I don't know, it's weird. It's been over two weeks now that we've been practicing this. And it's like, it's like a lifetime. Like, I can't believe that I used to go to a concert and like be elbow to elbow with somebody. Or I can't believe I used to go to a a venue to uh, to watch a a sports Uh, game. I can give you, I can give you the worst possible scenario. Wrigley Field, back in the old days. You're shoulder to shoulder with guys. You're at the trough peeing. There's no dividing walls. Yeah. You're peeing while you're also touching other dudes next to you. Yeah. That, my friends, is not social distancing at all. (laughs) No. And I think it's going to take a while for us to get back to comfortableness with something like that, which is what I've been thinking about because we've got a Disney trip in September. And by then, everything will kind of be... You know, back in working order, I would assume. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that would be shocking. By September, please, the theme park business will have to be bought out by Apple or something by then. But assuming everything's back to normal, um, you know, I feel like we're going to see, even when it comes back, we're going to see the entertainment industry take a hit. Travel is still going to be hit. People are not going to be wanting to get on planes for a while, especially the older folks. They're not going to be going to Disney. They're not going to be going to movies. Uh, It's, it's, uh, I think that, it would be a little a little too optimistic to believe that we can flip a switch. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I I'm a hugger. When I see family, friends, coworkers, what like I like to like walk up to someone I haven't seen in a long time and give them a hug and yeah. say hello. I've been that way like my whole life. And it's gonna be weird. Going back and, you know, like running back into people like you haven't seen in a long time, old college roommates or, you know, friends or whatever, because you like my natural instincts be like, come up and give someone a hug. But like right now, it's like, no, no, you know, you stay over there. You do you. I'm over here. So I think it I think you're right. It's going to be a little different, but I hope that we can find, you know, kind of find our way through this trying time that we can do all the things we need to to make sure that. We're doing our part, you know, protecting people, flattening the curve, all these things, and that hopefully 
some sort of vaccine is found, some sort of treatment is right. found, some something, and that we can get back to how things were before. And I know, like, that's kind of seems to be the big kind of, I don't know, a lot of people that are concerned about how we're doing things, like, you know, what is it going to take, what's it going to look like to get back to this, da, 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 da. And people are saying, like, we'll never get back to normal life again. I think some of those people are, you know, panicking and, you know, a little, a little feared yeah. and afraid. But I saw something that was in the paper um, from, like, when the Spanish flu in 1918 was really, really bad. And they put out notices saying, like, you know, basically all the same things. Places are closing. Restaurants, pool halls, venues, gatherings, this and that. And you know what? We got back to normal life again after that. Right. And, you know, the whole, whole idea of shutting everything down is foreign to us because we haven't had to live through something like this yet. So I do think we will get back to normal at some point, but it may just take a while. That's all. I agree. It'll take a while. I think I think everyone will be on edge until we come to this point next year and we see either we've got a vaccine that's working or we have a treatment that works for sure. Uh, I think we're going to be a little on edge until we see a full year go by. And and it's not like this, which I, I think will be the case, right? I, I mean, anyway, I, I say all that because my week was super boring <laughs> <laughs> and I had to fill the time. Like the only thing I can think of that happened this entire week was on Saturday. I did some projects. That was really it. Like went to Home Depot, got some mulch and uh, got some weed killer and kind of uh, went to town on the lawn uh, out in front especially, and uh, that was really, like, the big event for the entire w- week. There was not a lot that happened this week. Just working from home, hanging out. Uh, on Sunday, we did our Sunday movie, again, our little family movie thing with Emmy, and we watched Mulan. Ooh. And uh, so that was fun. And then I plugged in my hard drive that I haven't plugged in for a while to back up my computer and it was all corrupted and screwed up. And so I lost everything. So that was fun. Wonderful. But, uh, you know, reformatted it and backed up what I have on my computer now. And I was able to save our uh, our wedding pictures. That's the thing I was able to save from our hard drive. So at least there was that. Wow. Um, But that was, <laughs> honestly, that was pretty much... The week, right? I mean, you're staying inside and watching shows and movies and, you know, you're just kind of doing your doing your thing. Yeah. See, Emmy's not in school yet, so you don't have to worry about the school aspect, do you? No, not at all. Yeah. See, we've got that going. So, you know, it's since we recorded last, it's been, you know, a, a full week and, you know, we've got the kids home and we're we've got a daily routine with them and. You know, it's kind of broken down like these hour chunks. Like this hour is homework. This hour is creative activity time. This hour is playing outside, you know, whether that's in the backyard or going for a a walk or a little bike ride around the, the, you know, the neighborhood. Um, You know, lunch, uh, quiet time, which for them consists of like a movie or two, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bigger chunk of time. And then... It's schoolwork that requires computer stuff in the afternoon. And then it's chores and cleaning up and dinner and and another break in there in the afternoon to kind of get some, you know, exercise. Basically kind of like a recess. Like we've got a schedule for the kids. Right. And we're, tr- we're trying to work through it. And that's – it's hard because little kids that age, they can stay busy for maybe – 15, maybe 20 minutes if they're doing something that's not, you know, playing, right? Like if if we say, here, go play Mario Kart, they can go up and play Mario Kart for an hour or two. Mm-hmm. But we're not letting them do that. Right. So, so, but, you know, so there's some, there's some ins and there's some outs, but, uh, you know, yeah, the schooling though, trying to, trying to be homeschool teachers while we're also trying to work full time is, uh, it's challenging. It's got yeah. its challenges, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, man, that's for sure. I think there's a lot of parents out there doing the same thing. Yeah. It's so funny, though, to think, because then, like, I, I'm a big YouTube guy, so I've got, I watch YouTube more than I watch probably anything else combined. I love it, 
there's always something new, somebody posting, new channels, things I find funny or fun or interesting. Got I subscribe to tons of channels. And it's so interesting to see everybody quarantining, right? All all of their right. yeah. all of their content is now from their home. And so it's interesting, one, you get to see everybody's house, right? All these people that True. I watch all the time and, and get to know. And then it's it's interesting because you know, you realize everyone's going through the same thing, whether you're rich or poor, you're still at your house, you're still suffering from the same kind of isolationism. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's just, uh, it's somewhat unifying and depressing at the same time. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a weird time to be alive. And man, I don't know. Yeah. I well, thought I'd I'll, see this. I'll tell you what else is going on in the Stapleton household. The isolation beard growing is on. Oh, boy. I, after being home one week, I shaved because I felt like I needed to, I needed to clean up. And we talked about that a little last week. But now I've decided I'm just going to not shave from this point out until we return back to a semblance of normalcy where I go back to work, I'm back in the office, whatever. And so I'm just going to start letting, letting the facial hair grow. And... I'm going to just grow an isolation beard. Well. And so if this lasts <laughs> another week or two, then that's as far as it gets. If this thing drags on three, four months, I'm going to look like a crazy mountain man. Yes, you will. And they yeah. don't get to see it, but I do. That's right. Now, <laughs> I will say, I have, if I were to let my hair grow out, I would have the Jean-Luc Picard look where I've got nothing on top. But right. I just got it around the sides, you know, old next generation look reference. Um, but I'm going to keep shaving the top of my head. So I'm going to shave my head, but I'm going to let the beard go. I'm excited. So uh, either it's going to look like a sexy lumberjack or most likely what really it's going to look like is a prison inmate. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'd like to think that I'll have the sexy lumberjack look, but I know it's really prison inmate is what well, I'm going to look like. You're right. It's definitely yep. going to be prison inmate. I'm yeah, seeing the sure, beginning of sure. it. <laughs> I didn't really sure. think about it at first when I saw you. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm used to looking in the mirror because none right. of y'all have seen me out there. Super friends, but Matt sports a beard 24 seven. Sometimes it's That's a little true. more kept, but. And you've been sporting a beard for. Quite Many a lot years. of years now. Yeah. Many years. I was realizing the other day that I've had a goatee on my face for almost 20 years now. Crazy. Not not quite, but almost 20 years. My wife has never seen me completely clean shaven. Never? You've never my, done it? Never. My wow. kids have never seen me completely uh, clean shaven. So what I may do... Yes. Just... Just for the shock value is I may grow this isolation prison inmate beard. And then when I decide to clean it all up, I'll completely shave my face because it'll only take me two, three weeks and the goatee will be back on again. Right. But I may completely shave my face. Do it. Just, do to, it. just to see what happens. Because I think my kids would freak out because what I'll do is I won't tell them or I won't tell Brita. And I'll just get up one morning, I'll just shave it all off, <laughs> go into work, freak people out at work, and then come home and pick up the kids from daycare. They would <laughs> They won't they get wouldn't... in the car. Oh we no, they the won't get in the car. <laughs> They're like, it's a stranger, call mommy, call mommy. Where's my real daddy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So anyway, that that's going on. Uh I've been playing a lot more Animal Crossing. Yeah. I've been playing a lot more Animal Crossing, and I've been putting in the hours. I've actually been streaming this for a a number of nights now this last week. Tarantula farming in the evenings. So I go to a mystery island, and then I clear out everything on the island. Trees, stumps, rocks, everything. uh, So that basically only bugs spawn in a couple places, and I scare them off. And then after a little bit of doing that, a tarantula will appear. And then I got to go catch that tarantula. 
And the first time I did that, man, I was scared. My blood it's, pressure I was really stuff, high. Man. Oh, I hate it. But you know what? Now I got it on lockdown. Yeah. Last night I farmed something like 78 tarantulas. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So That's what we call abusing the system. It's called farming materials. <laughs> That's what it's called. I play it the way you're supposed to play it. And uh, I'm probably it's a, way behind listen, you now. <laughs> if if the uh, creator of the game said they don't care about time traveling, people who save their game then reset the time right. on their switch to jump forward or backwards in time so they can you know do certain things with their island. If they said they don't care about that and they know that that happens and that's kind of built into the system so you can do it, I think that is breaking the system. Oh, but, absolutely. It's all breaking if, the system. If the creator says, no, we built that in there and we want it to be there, then is it? It's an intended feature. Sure, sure. <laughs> However you, you want to justify super it. Super friends, I, w I wish you could have seen that eye roll before Matt said anything. It was just like, oh, gosh. He's lawyering me with technicalities. <clears throat> you know, it's not much, but it's honest work. That's the uh -huh. way that I do it, you know? It ain't much, but it's honest work. Well, I'm going to get ahead. Tell me how it is <laughs> <Yeah>. in the rear. <laughs> I will. I'm just going to hang out and enjoy the island life. Yeah, I played the uh play play the play the game to I don't know, man. I just uh, This will go back to our question of the week because I I felt like I knew what my answer was last week when we asked it, and I definitely know what my answer is now. Yes, I know uh, what your answer is too, and I think my answer is different than what I said. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I, I wrote down here, is because of all this kind of craziness that's going on, I wanted to highlight something for my week that was a positive, like a really like nice positive thing, because I think sharing those kind of moments are, are a really good thing. So I wrote down one thing, and the funny thing was, is as I was writing down this one thing to put some notes... A second thing happened to me that I thought was kind of uh, noteworthy. So the first thing was today when I was walking around in the afternoon with my boys, we took a little 10 minute walk. Charlie's Sunday school teacher from church was driving by and flagged us down. And she was actually taking little packages she had put together of like pre-made food, you know, little snacks and candies and popcorn things and whatever. And she was taking them to give to her kids just to say, hey, I miss you. It's been a couple of weeks. I want you to know that I'm thinking of you. And she saw she saw us walking. She flagged us down and she handed it to me. And Charlie was super excited to see her and was super excited that she brought him, you know, like a little care package. And that was one of those nice things where it's like neighbors coming together, you know, trying to, you know, do something nice for other people, show the love, you know, let people know that even though we don't see them right now because of social distancing and isolation, that doesn't mean they're not cared for. That doesn't mean we don't care for others. It doesn't mean that we're not thinking about them. And I thought that was really great. And so I was writing this down, taking these notes. And then there's a knock on our front door and it's our neighbor from across the street, Brandon. And he comes over and he asks if he can see me and I, and I come to the door and, and he says, Hey, I saw this online and it made me think of you. So I ordered one and it's a pack of Star Wars playing cards that he had ordered. And they're from Theory 11, which is a very popular cool. website that they sell also some magic supplies and things like that. Um, and so I haven't, I haven't opened these up yet. I'm going to, I'm going to save these, but the box art's got, uh, kind of like a red foil embossed on black and it's got deaths like a death star on there and also kind of like the window from the throne room of the emperor on the death cool. star yeah, and it's yeah. got some vader lightsabers and i'm going to hold this up so matt can see a little bit but it's really kind of a cool neat <laughs> design on the box yeah and so it was it was just interesting because I, i'm sitting here taking a note about something that someone did that was really kind and it was for my son you know, something I could kind of highlight and then something happened to me. And so I just want to say, like, I know I know we say this a lot, but like if you get a chance, do something nice. Make sure you're being safe. Make sure you're, you know, you're following all the guidelines, but try to do something nice for a neighbor or a friend, a relative to let them know that you're thinking about them. And I think that would be a really cool thing 
if all of our super friends could do that this week. Love it. That's kind of my week. I'm going to end on the, you know, hey, love, yeah. peace, hope, and then we're going to go right into murdering Bothans. Let's murder them. I always have to let you know, many Bothans died to bring us this information. Rest in peace, you Bothans. All right, Matt. We're into Rebel Intelligence. We have murdered Bothans once again. What do you have for me this week? All right, so... <clears throat> the first thing I've got for us this week is good news for me, and probably some of you, if you have listened to me at all, you know I've been watching this show on Netflix, but we got official word today that Lock and Key has been greenlit for a second season on Netflix, and this oh, is nice. the, uh, yeah, this is the graphic novel Netflix adaptation TV show uh, about these this family that moves into their old family home after their father gets murdered and uh they kind of go back to to his roots and discover this house and magic keys and what they do and it is such a good show the reviews are are mostly positive but my review is almost all positive i love it Maybe it's because I like teen drama also, just kind of in general, <laughs> like Riverdale right. and Friday Night Lights. I'm like, yeah, give me more of that. But uh, this one was this one was really, really well done. Really fun show. Scary and cool. And I'm happy to see it get a second season. Nice. I, uh, I haven't seen it yet. It is on my list. But I remember being super excited to see it. And so I still do want to. But I'm glad that it's getting a second season. That way I know for sure that it's good enough, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Because there's always those things where you're like, you know, it looks good and then it never gets another season. And so you're like, eh, do I really want right. to invest myself in something that, you know, eh, I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Really glad to hear that. All right. I've got a little bit of news for you. All right. This is coming, by the way, of The Hollywood Reporter. Mm -hmm. So this is also Netflix. Netflix has reached a deal to adapt the video game Dragon's Lair. Now, most okay. of you are probably thinking, okay, we've talked about The Last of Us recently. We've talked about Uncharted games. We've talked about, you know, Tomb Raider games. Dragon's Lair doesn't sound familiar. That's because it's a video game from 1983 before... Young Matthew was even born. This is true. Dragon's Lair was an interesting video game because it wasn't like the typical Atari uh, arcade games of the day where you, you know, you could control your guy. You could also shoot and do things. It basically was, it was, how to put this? It was like a video because actually it was designed by Don Bluth. Don Bluth did all the animation. Uh, if you know Don Bluth, Don Bluth back in the day used to work for Disney, spun off and went on his own, did a bunch of animated features. Um, he's got a very distinct kind of animation style, but it was designed to work on a laser disc. And basically you kind of followed like these like little videos and then you would come up to this action sequence and you had to control, you know, whether right, left, you know, whatever your action was. And you had to time it just right in order to go to the next, basically, cut scene, which was going to be the next thing. And so it wasn't necessarily a video game in the truest sense, but it was that, like, it was kind of this real hybrid between, like, a movie and a video game at the same time. And you kind of got to choose how you played it, and you could have some control. Well, Netflix is going to adapt this thing. It's going to be live action. And the company is currently in talks that Ryan Reynolds could potentially star in this and also possibly produce this. Wow. So Dragon's Lair, it's, you know, it's got Dirk the Daring. That's the protagonist. Potentially, we could be seeing Ryan Reynolds as Dirk. And he's on a quest to save Princess Daphne. And... I love everything about this. Don Bluth is on board. He's going to, uh, I think he's going to be helping produce this. 
So we're going to okay. get the original animator, the guy that put it together. Anyway, Don Bluth has been trying to get something like this done live action for a long time. He's on board, potentially Ryan Reynolds. I love this. This makes me happy because even if it's completely wacky, different than the video game, the video game is so old and so very kind of like linear in a sense that there's not a lot to it. Yeah. Especially especially by today's standards. That they can pretty much do anything. And come on, Ryan Reynolds. Come on. <laughs> you yeah. You had me at Ryan Reynolds, man. I am <laughs> right. in the what I know most about this game is it being featured in season two of Stranger Things. The kids are playing it, I think, at the very beginning of like the very first episode of that season. Right. They're at the arcade and they're playing Dragon's Lair. So that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. I mean, I've heard of it before. It's it's a very famous video game, probably for the reasons you mentioned, where it wasn't yeah. quite a video game, but it was, but it wasn't. So I think that's awesome. I'm excited about it. Ryan Reynolds, God, man, I love that guy. Yep. Man. Well, I can't beat anything Ryan Reynolds. I just can't. But what I can talk I mean, about. You just move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I can talk about is sports, because I know that's why we all came to this podcast, was to talk about sports. Hardcore, man. So ESPN is actually airing Disney sports movies instead of sports. Awesome. Because look, right now, it would be March Madness, the NBA, the NHL, and baseball. That's right. what would be happening in real life if things were happening right now. And now there's... There's nothing for them to do. There's literally no sports. So please, please tell me that ESPN's running like the Mighty Ducks two on an endless loop. I wish that's the best <laughs> Mighty Ducks, by the way. Contrary to popular uh. belief, D two rocks. Um. Anyway, no. Every Friday they're going to be airing the following movies. Well, it'll be in in order here: The Rookie, Glory Road, Miracle, Invincible, Secretariat. And the greatest game ever played. All right, so, so let's see: they're horse racing, golf, basketball, basketball baseball, baseball hockey. hockey, and football with invincible. Yeah, yeah. So all the major sports are covered. Well, and not only not only that, but they picked movies that a they already own, right? Because Disney right. owns ESPN. But b these are all like. These are all movies that try to like, you know, really like pluck at your heartstrings, play on your emotion, to like yeah. really get you up out of your seat rooting for something, which is what you do when you go to a sporting event. Like you're rooting for your team and you feel invested. So I'm glad that they're doing that versus like no no offense to Mighty Ducks 2, but <laughs> if it'd been Mighty Ducks 2, like are you really rooting for the team in that or it's more just kind of like a, a kid movie you're like, "Oh, okay." But like Miracle like right. that movie, like, oh, ooh. It's excellent. Those are excellent you. movies. It gets you right here. <laughs> so anyway, that's what they're going to be doing Friday nights. Tune in Fridays at 830 Eastern if you're still somebody who tunes into things live. Hmm. Or maybe just stream them on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I think all of those... I'm looking at them. I think they're all on there, but I'm not sure about Secretariat and Invincible. I know the greatest game ever played is because I just watched that like two weeks mm. ago. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Speaking of Disney Plus, uh, we didn't wait for Onward to come to Disney Plus. Oh, you didn't? You just no, the it. boy the boys wanted it, so we bought it, and they've watched it like four times already. Nice. How how did you like it? I have only seen it, it once. Okay. I only saw it once the first time. I want to watch it again. It yeah. was pretty good. It, it's this. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it is kind of a formulaic Pixar movie, but it's a story about two brothers and man, it just kind of, I don't know, because it's yeah. the story that they lost their dad. I, my brother I and say, I, we've lost our dad. So like, was that, yeah, poignant. Yeah. So, so for me, like, I didn't ever feel like I got choked up or anything like that, but just the story resonates with me and Pixar and Disney, they know how to tell stories, which kind of made me think <laughs> of this, right? Cause we're talking about these sports movies that tug your heartstrings. They know how to tell stories, and uh, it's a good one. Anyway, yes. sorry, it's a little side tangent. No, great. Back Moving to uh, right on. back to what Rebel Intelligence that we got on the back of Dead Bothans. Um, I haven't talked about Kickstarter in a while. 
Uh-oh. Because I only bring up Kickstarter when there's something that I feel is very unique to kind of nerd pop culture, stuff that kind of fits in with the theme of this podcast. And I've got another one for you, super friends. And I'm going to tell you this right now. It's already fully funded, so don't worry that, like, you <laughs> know, you're being shilled to in order to make this thing happen. It's going to happen. But it's it's if or when you want to get in on this. There is a company that's made a waffle maker, Matt. But this waffle maker is not like any ordinary waffle maker. You pour the batter in, you close the top, you let it brown, and it comes out in Lego shapes. (laughs) Building blocks. I kid you not. This thing has, it's interlocking too. It's like, it has the little studs on the top and the little holes on the bottom so you can lock this thing into place. I grew up just eating waffles. I just ate them. But apparently people like stack them and make things out of them and use toothpicks to make like little like structures before they'll eat them. Interesting. But no more do you have to rip apart pancakes. No, no, no. You can kickstart this thing and you can get your own building brick waffle maker for your very own to bring in your house. Now, I took a look at it. And I'm trying to remember, like, the cheapest option, I think, is, like, maybe around 50 bucks, 45, 50, 55 bucks, somewhere around there. And that basically just gets you the one waffle maker when this thing gets produced. But if you pay, I think, like, 70, 75 bucks, you get some extra construction plates you can swap in and out of the waffle maker so you can make different Ah. shapes than just the standard ones that come with it. They're looking to ship sometime around August, I believe. Um, of course, we don't know kind of, you know, how everything's going to affect the global economy and, and shipping. But if you want to make, I don't know, castles and houses and whatnot with waffles, it's on Kickstarter right, the, right now. Go check it out. It is literally called the uh, Building Brick Waffle Maker. Very cool. That's kind of fun. I love Legos. Yeah. Well, there's uh, there's obviously a huge subset of individuals who love Legos. It's shockingly popular. Breakfast so, Legos? I mean, I come know. on. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I've got something that's not as cool and is kind of sad. Uh-oh. So, well, it's not sad. It's not that sad. I'll tell you this. It's not that sad and I haven't noticed it. However, so we talked, I'm trying to remember if we talked last week a little bit about how some of the streaming platforms like Netflix and YouTube were going to throttle back on the amount of bandwidth that they're taking up on the internet. So they're slowing internet speeds. Yeah. Yeah, there was a news article that like Europe was being right. heavily lobbied to do that, right? Yes. So earlier this week, Sony president and CEO Jim Ryan said that they are also going to be slowing down or kind of delaying your game downloads so Uh if you have noticed over the last few days or week that your games are quite a bit slower at downloading you are not crazy this is the way that it is in the world that we live in now so and i get it everyone's trying to help out so that everybody can get the work done that they need to that the internet isn't too taxed and that we're able to access information when we need to get that information. I, in my own regular life, am yet to notice any hiccups in my service. Everything I stream streams at the normal quality it, it always streams in. However, I have not downloaded a game from the PlayStation Store or anything this week, so I can't speak to kind of the download speeds. However, uh, Sony is in the game now as far as uh, companies that are that are kind of pulling back on the amount of uh, bandwidth they take up. Yeah, uh, I mean, th- this seems this seems kind of like a no brainer to me. Like, you know, not that I like it, but it just kind of makes sense. Sure. Yep. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not really mad if this has to happen. I mean, no. Don't throttle my uh, Netflix. I'd ra- I'd rather have like th- those streaming platforms 
But like the video game downloads, I'm okay downloading it a little bit slower and let it run overnight. Right. I agree. Big deal. But I'd be really upset if I wanted to stream the latest episode of whatever it is that I was watching and it wasn't in like 4K HDR. I'd be pissed. Hmm. But video I, games I don't care as much about. Yeah. I only get mine in 1080p, so... You wouldn't even notice. Wouldn't even notice. But I would. Oh, man. Would yeah. <laughs> Drive me nuts. I don't even have a 4K TV. That's one of those things, too. Like, in today's day and age, to say, like, you don't have a 4K. Like, 4K TVs are now, like, dirt Everything's cheap. Everything's like, 4K. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, but my TVs are still really good 1080p HD TVs. Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to rock it until I have to replace it. Right. Because then I'm going to get, probably by that point, it'll be some, like, 16K ultra uber television you know it's gonna be sunday 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 it's gonna be you know that way of marketing and i'm like ooh, here's the new thing that's like completely glitchless and you're like what does that even mean i don't know it's a marketing term who cares it's the thing all right the last thing i've got this is interesting to me uh because this one little article i had now is a bigger thing because things have happened matthew Square Enix, which is one of my favorite software publishers, has announced that they're going to uh, put out an upgraded version of Near Replicant. Near Replicant is a 10-year-old action RPG game, which I never played. But I love Square Enix, and I've seen some of these screenshots. But they're going to upgrade it, and they're going to release it for the Xbox One, the PS4, and the PC. And... I like this idea of taking really old, good games and bringing it into more modern. It's a way that I think some of these developers can get extra life out of intellectual property that they have. And so I've watched this video that Square Enix put out, and it's just, it's fantastic. And so I was pretty excited. But then today, today of all days, we got even better bigger news. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. I even thought like, oh, maybe we could talk sure. about like games that we would love to see up resed or something right. like that. And Resident Evil 3 released this week as well, or is going right. to release this coming week as well yeah, as yeah. another remake or remaster of an old game. This is very successful, right? Capcom killed it with Resident Evil 2 right. last year, Resident Evil 3 this year. If they do Resident Evil 4 next year, their best Resident Evil game, oh man. Oh, I think it's going to happen. I'd buy it. I just bought it for the Switch a few months ago and beat it, but anyway. Nice. So today, Nintendo made a big announcement. They said that they're planning on remastering for the Switch a bunch of Mario games since this is Mario's 35th anniversary. And the list is pretty extensive, so I'm going to kind of go over these because these are big heavy hitters in the mario franchise to be clear this is not confirmed by nintendo but there are literally dozens of outlets that are reporting this like every legitimate outlet you can think of it's like trending on reddit i mean it's all over the place with which is kind of the way that some of these things exactly yeah no right right So, so it's pretty well set in stone Right. But what's interesting, though, is like we don't know how long the coronavirus is going to be a thing. We don't know how long we're going to be quarantined, uh, you know, isolated, all this stuff. So the idea that like Nintendo is pushing other IPs that are well beloved, because let's be honest, Animal Crossing is a well beloved IP. And I got it. And I was like, I'm going to give it a shot. But now that like, I'm kind of confined here to the to the home, my wife got it. And we talked about this. I saw an article on CNN, I think just yesterday, I think it was Sunday I saw it, and CNN was ran this article about Animal Crossing and Nintendo saying how it's the perfect storm right now for Nintendo because they have this game that is about like living on your own little private deserted island and building it up and it's cute and it's fun and it's interactive and people right now are having to socially isolate themselves from others and stay distanced away from family friends relatives all this and people are picking up this game big time this and they're game, playing it i want to know what the sales numbers are because uh, so so do you I. can't you can't find a switch anywhere no nope. and you can't find i i just it just it blows my my mind because like i said i'm big on on youtube and they there's just little throwaway jokes of eh maybe i'll just go play more animal crossing 
So and you're like, man, everyone's playing this game. It's crazy. It's it's everywhere. And what I think is interesting though is that getting back to this Mario kind of pseudo announcement because I think it's their right. way of announcing it. You are going to release a bunch of games. There's going to be a lot of new Switch owners because people went out and bought up Switches because they anticipated being stuck at home. Right. People bought up, you know, Switch Lights, the the portable version that you can't dock. And now Nintendo's talking about releasing some of their big heavy hitters over the decades. We're talking Super Mario 64, which was on the N64 that came out in 1996. Super Mario Sunshine, which was a GameCube, came out in 2002. I loved that game. Super Mario Galaxy, which is a Wii game from 2007. Super Mario 3D World, which was a Wii U game in 2013. And then possibly a remake of Paper Mario. And then Paper Mario, the well, at least the original one, was an N64. No, it was a GameCube game. GameCube game. Um, now, the interesting thing is, if they do this... The Mario franchise is much bigger than Animal Crossing. Right. And if you've found a way to like gather more market share now, and now you've got other people that are playing video games that probably never like Brita's never played a video game before like this. She's never had a console. And now she's, you know, kind of de facto using the switch that I previously had as kind of her switch and her and the kids switch. And she's playing this. If they were to release an up remastered Mario game here a couple months down the road, I think she would pick it up. Yeah, this is this is pretty big news. I was very happy when I read that this morning because it just got released today, this information, yeah. this kind of leak, supposed leak, um, but it's leaked everywhere, literally everywhere. Um, and... We don't know exactly what games are going to be included. I think we can expect those four because those are kind of the four pillars of 3D Mario. Yeah. And then Paper Mario. Every People love Paper Mario. I don't like RPGs, so I won't play that game. RPGs, the JRPG kind of situation, the turn-based yeah. combat. I just I used to like it when I was young, but it's too, too slow for me now. Um, but I, I, I I'm hesitant to get overly excited because... I have always been a Nintendo fan and they always screw me over at some point and they under deliver on what I feel like they should deliver. If that makes sense, the games they put out are great. However, they under deliver for me as far as quantity and as far as what I want. I don't know. It's hard to explain what Nintendo does. They're good and they're terrible at the same time. So for me, them releasing you know, Super Mario 64, that sounds great. But I was texting friends about it, and they're like, oh, I can't wait to see it with, like, Mario Odyssey graphics. And I'm like, whoa, trust me, this is Nintendo. They may not even bump this thing up to HD. We'll just mm. have to see what they do with it. So I, I'm not I'm not sold on what they're going to do with these games f- more than port them so they can be played on the Switch. Here's, uh, here's where I'm going to get a little tinfoil hat conspiracy e on this i think oh so first of all i think this is a great idea but this is the 35th anniversary of the mario franchise and suit and mario do you know what next year is the 35th anniversary of i hope it's zelda the legend of zelda that's (laughs) right because the led the original legend of zelda game came out february 21st of 1986 so what i'm hoping is if this goes really well and this is beloved and adopted, then maybe next year we get a 35th anniversary of Zelda games and we could see games that I've been waiting on to get remastered for the Switch, like The Wind Waker, which was remastered I've played for the game so many Wii U. Times now. <laughs> I would love to see that on the Switch. I would love to see Twilight Princess put on the Switch, Ocarina right. of Time, Majora's Mask. Yeah. I would love to see some of those games redone and put out on the Switch. So I'm hoping, my fingers are crossed, that Mario does really well with some of these remasters, ports, whatever they're going to be later this year, so that next year we can get a big Zelda year, which will then, I think, if they could do that, is going to satisfy a lot of diehards on, on both fronts if they were to do this, but also 
bring in a lot of people now that have Switches. Give them more stuff to play. Give them a chance to dig through some of the back catalog in a way that doesn't make them feel like they're playing a game from, like, you know, 1996. Yep, that's my fear. And if they do that, then it would be perfect to roll right into that old Breath of the Wild 2, like, three years from now. And a new Mario game. Right. Well... We'll Tim see. Tinfoil hat there. I don't know. I mean, it's just, we'll you know. We'll see. Nintendo lets me down consistently and constantly. They dropped like a mini direct this last week, and it was terrible. It was like the worst thing I've ever seen. Nothing on there that mattered at all. Anyway, yep. except we're getting yep. Star Wars Episode One Pod Racer eventually. Hey. That's cool. No. Oh, yeah, man. I don't care about that. So anyway, we'll see. Yep. I'm excited just to play all those right. games again, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's uh let's move on. Last week we talked about Animal Crossing New Horizons. And our question of the week was interesting. We asked, do people play this game for the chill island adventure or do you play it for the money making schemes? And I said I felt like I would probably end up getting hooked by the money making schemes and the economy of it. Boy was I right. <laughs> I I'm hunting tarantulas at night and farming them. I bought like 440,000 bells worth of turnips on Sunday so I can play the stock market. Uh, it's the economy, Matt. The economy's got me hooked. Like I want, I want to amass as much as I possibly can in this fictional universe. So that I don't ever run into problems of not being able to pay off my slumlord of a landlord, Tom Nook. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And uh, I used to be that way, but I'm finding out that I'm just much more chill. I don't... I guess I want to take it slow and appreciate the progress, if that Mm. makes sense. Yeah, because I know that there are people that are way further along than me. You go on YouTube and it's like you've already been like paving your town. I mean, I I can't do any of that yet. But I just like the kind of I would say it's the way the developer meant for it to be played, (laughs) but just kind of the more relaxed. I mean, I'm still making money. I mean, I've upgraded my house like four times. Right. And, you know, I've, I've built bridges and slopes and stuff, but at the same time, I just like, yeah, just the chill atmosphere. Yeah. I'd enjoy it. Bit of I'm, both. I'm anticipating getting to the chill atmosphere, but right now it's the economy rat race of I want to expand my house as much as possible, pay off right. Tom, Tom Nook, and then find a way to like start filling my house with cool stuff and having a real chill, fun you know, house and things in it. Like I want to put in a movie theater. Yeah. I want to figure out how to do a movie theater in my room. I want to put in, I want my bedroom to resemble Peter Parker's. So like there's like microscopes and electronics kits and, you know, kind of a dish Like I want it to look like that. Like I want it to anyway. So it's going to take me a while to get there to find the things I need and, and whatnot. It may take forever. That's right. So it'll always be a work in progress. But let's go over to email where we always start, fordofnerd at gmail.com. And we've got Peter Christensen. We're going to start with Peter. He says, Dear nerds, happy week three of school closures from Seattle. The initial insanity has worn off. Week two was relaxing, but we're starting to get a little ground down into cabin fever. Doesn't bode well since schools here are already closed until April 27th. But we're all healthy here and well supplied, just getting by one day at a time. But there's no way we're buying Onward as long as it's going to be on Disney Plus a week later. I think I said this before, but Frozen 2 and Onward are likely to become generational favorites because of their availability on Disney Plus during the quarantine period. I think that's probably right on the money. Interesting. Yeah. I mean,. How many kids are going to be watching Frozen 2 and Onward? And I right. really, I really, really enjoyed Onward. So, eh, we bought it. It's one we're going to watch over and over and over and over again. I get it. We may not always have Disney+. Plus. There may come a day. I doubt it, but, no, you know, you never. never know. 
All right, he says, I'm a little, okay, a lot offended that you say I don't actually have a place of honor in your email reading section. (laughs) Although, if anyone could knock me out of first email, it's Brita. My kids have started playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp on their iPhones. I don't know how it differs from New Horizons, but they're certainly engaged. They show me their huge bugs and fish they're catching, and they keep asking for more time to play. I pass time in different ways. I play the open world real game of real life, and although I'd like to play for the chill and inordinate amount of time, it is spent on the cash grind. Cheers, Peter Christensen. Oh, Peter. Always cheeky. (laughs) What a cheeky lad. I get it, I get it. All right, we have a second email, Matt. Oh, good. This one is from, as she signs it, Brita Stapleton, the OG super friend. Oh, wow. She says, hello, fellow nerds. So I originally started playing Animal Crossing for the Chill Island vibe. I enjoy doing little tasks and collecting things and just puttering around the island. However, you throw in huge debt for home loans, expansions, bridge and ramp infrastructure, and so on, and I get stressed out. And then the adult in me is screaming, pay off your debt. Don't live beyond your means. I feel like I have to work like crazy to make bells and pay it off. It also doesn't help that my husband, I won't mention names, has involved me in every get-rich-quick scheme he can find on Reddit and other shady internet sources. So now I'm consumed with the dala dala bells, y'all. <laughs> I would like to get back to the more casual nature of this game, but my competitive nature says you can win this. Make a better house and island than your husband. So we'll just have to see where this all goes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Who, who, only you guys could make Animal Crossing competitive. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, like, I can make anything competitive. <laughs> there's oh, all, Brita. There, I'm there's so always sorry. winners. So, so the funny thing is, like, an open world game like this, like, I can get competitive with, like, the economy and stuff. But there's no way I'm going to be able to compete with, like, how her island looks, how her house looks. Like, I go in her house, I'm like, wow, she's got a kitchen. It's got a fridge. It's got a microwave. It's got, like, a a little blender and, like, a, whatchamacallit, like, a mixer. And it's got tile floors. Like, it looks gorgeous. I've got what's the equivalent of a college dorm room. I mean, (laughs) it's literally, like... Here's a punching bag and an exercise bike and a little wall clock from like a deli counter. And here's a microscope on the ground and here's a cot and yeah. here's a rocking chair next to a weird IR wooden burning stove. Like it's, it's just this <laughs> hodgepodge of just like junk. There's no theme. There's right. no planning. It's just like, Oh, I got a, Oh, I've got a katana sword. Great. I got to put this on the wall. Like I just, you know, yep. I haven't figured it out yet. I gotcha. So, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, let's jump over to Facebook. Facebook.com slash Fordham Nerd. We've got Matthew Haven. He says, I bought it today because I needed something super chill to play that would take my mind off of things for a couple of hours. Plus, two of my friends play Animal Crossing. So we've got another person for the chillness oh, I'm glad. of the game they think it's gonna be just a couple hours here and there until it sucks your life away from you this game should come with a disclaimer tom like, nook is a bad bad <laughs> man boy this game is addicting anyway right. uh josh stapleton my brother says i always poo pooed the idea of this game but my daughter has new leaf on the 3ds and she liked the game but wasn't sure what to do After months of saying, I can't help you, I know nothing about it, I decided to pick it up and learn the mechanics as a way to bond with her and help out. That was last weekend. A couple of days ago, I bought New Horizons, and I'm hooked. I think it's a combination of both money-making and, like the old SimCity games, it's also just seeing what you can do with the land given to you. I like that, because it is true, like... You do have to kind of figure out, like, you know, how do you, how do you want to set up 
what you have? How, how are you going to make money based on the fruit that you have and dealing with, you know, things like weeds that pop up and bug infestations and whatever? I love it. I'm so I'm, glad people are playing this game. I've been talking about it on this podcast forever and I felt I, like I was alone. But now I feel like there's strength in numbers. Yep. I don't think you're alone. I mean, come on, CNN Rose reported on this. Definitely not alone. No, yeah. everyone's playing this game. It's so funny. Mainstream to me media is picking it up. Anyway, uh, over on Twitter, we've got Bernabe, my back, my back, butter teeth at Dante's oh underscore Belmont. He says it really doesn't appeal to me, or at least I haven't tried any Animal Crossing yet. The streams and videos don't look that interesting to me. I'm gonna say this for you, Bernabe. I felt the exact same way watching other people play this game, or not this game, but playing the previous versions of the game. I looked at it and just kind of went, yeah, okay, but it doesn't seem interesting. There's not like a lot of action. However, when you are playing it and it's your responsibility to collect the fruit and collect the fish and the bugs and and try to make money and try to upgrade your stuff, like... You know, you've got to grow flowers and there's all these like little achievements to do. It really does kind of get that like mobile gaming hook in you where it's like you need to accomplish these number of things every day in order to do this thing over here. You do need to be able to make enough money so you can do this and you can upgrade this. It it feels like a mobile game on steroids, but at the same time, it's just like it's just super chill to play. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't fault you for not thinking it looks exciting, but I think if you were to try it, I think it would creep up on you and it would surprise you. It sure did for me. Well, anyway, man. super friends, thank you so much for your answers. Uh, we appreciate your time in answering us every single week. Matt, the super friends are out there. They're hanging out. There a lot of them are playing Animal Crossing this week and probably for the next while. How can they help us out? How can they help the Fortress of Nerditude this week? So, I mean, this is going to echo the same thing we've said the last, like, three weeks, I think. And Spencer mentioned it earlier in this one. During this quarantine, let's just be nice and love each other and be kind and do nice things. So, if you can think of anything that you can do that's nice for someone else or that it just pops into your head one day, you wish somebody would do this for you, do it for someone else. And uh, and that'll... uh, that will that does embody the spirit of the fortress. We just uh, we want to uplift and be kind and be inclusive and love everyone. And also, if you want to send me some gifts in Animal Crossing, you are allowed to do that as well. Head to your local airport and send me a gift. Um, Ten thousand bells minimum. Um, anyway, <laughs> so that's that's what I would say. Just be kind and find ways to help and serve other people. And uh, if you can, give, donate, give extra tips when you go out, pick something up for takeout, just give a few dollars here and there, and it makes a difference. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, Matt, so I, I came up with this idea. We're talking I about- I hate this idea. This is stupid, and it was I lo- so hard, and I hated I love, it. I love this idea. So we've talked about things like, our favorite movies or favorite <clears throat> video games. And like, that's kind of a, a thing we've done before. Lots of podcasts have done that. Lots of conversations, lots of articles have been done oh, on yeah. things like that. What was the best movie of this year? What was the best, you know, video game, blah, blah, blah. Now my idea is this, and it's simple. It really is, but it's deceptively hard. We're going to, we're going to isolate. We're going to quarantine movies. You can only pick, Five movies, one from each category I'm going to name, to watch for the next, let's say, few months, maybe six months. This isn't like a desert island scenario where you only get to pick five movies for the rest of your life. But this is, let's say, for the next six months, you can only watch one movie in each of these categories. Every All the other movies have to stay six feet away and you can't watch them. <laughs> so here are the categories, and we're going to talk about them. Comedy, drama, action adventure, romance, sci-fi. 
Those are the yeah. five categories. I could have expanded more. I thought about like, well, what about like musical or what about? Yeah, there's a lot more you know, I was thinking of. Um, yeah, but I figured but let's keep it, it hard. Let's keep it to the kind of maybe let's say the big five: comedy, drama, action, adventure, romance, and sci-fi. So, Matt, in yes. the comedy category, you've got to isolate and quarantine every other comedy movie, and you can only pick one that you can watch. Let's say for the next six months. What is your comedy movie? And if you have honorable mentions, you definitely can hit those up as well. So uh, I didn't pick honorable mentions on any of these. I went okay. full bore, but I will mention some honorable mentions. Nice. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So people don't think I'm crazy because there's probably a few in here that people go, what the f-? Um But this one was an easy no brainer when I thought of it. It took a long time because you can go comedies and you think of all of your favorite comedies but if I was being quarantined, is what I'm thinking of. I was thinking of, I am by myself, I am isolated, and I can okay. only have a certain amount of movies. These are the movies I pick. And I was thinking for like a year, at least. So Six months, this, a year, sure. Okay. When this one came to me, it was perfect. And my comedy is Father of the Bride. Ooh. Easily one of my favorite overall movies of all time. But the real reason I chose Father of the Bride is because this is I, I've been vulnerable on this podcast lately about my my growing up years and my therapy sessions. But right. Father of the Bride is a movie that just makes me feel warm and happy and cozy and safe and makes me laugh and makes me cry. And it gives me all of the things I need a movie to give me. And uh, the music is some of the best music for a movie that there is it's just a warm blanket during this quarantine isolation time and i'm going to watch this movie this week for sure i'm probably gonna buy it nice okay love that movie i I like that i like that a lot what uh what were some of your other top contenders honorable mentions in comedy you were thinking of so there were i was i was trying to decide what kind of mood i'm in because that's kind of a yeah, that's right. just a feel yep. good comedy. But then I was like, okay, if I was in like a stupid comedy, like just a stupid comedy, there were two that I was debating between. One of them is Anchorman. Okay. Yeah. It's that makes me laugh so hard. And the other one, look, people are gonna hate on this. I love Adam Sandler. And Grown Ups is one of my favorite oh, comedies. Yeah. Makes me laugh so hard. So those were kind of the two I was debating between. Then Father of the Bride kind of came to mind, and I went, oh, no brainer. It's Father of the Bride. Yep. I So it's interesting that you say, like, you kind of had to think about, like, your mood. Because I did the same thing, too, as I was thinking of some of these categories. I went, okay, if I'm quarantined and I can't watch anything else in this, you know, genre, it's like I need something that's either, like, really, really funny that's repeat watchable Right. But like doesn't get old and like I thought like I was like man dumb and dumber for like just dumb slapsticky like yeah dumb and dumber is a great film but if I had to like watch this movie like every day for like six months or a year or ever or, like at least once or twice a week because I'm needing stuff to do I think it would wear on me a lot faster than I really would think right. like right now so I kind of same thing like you like I try to think of like my mood and so I'm going to give you my two honorable mentions. The first one is Groundhog Day. Okay. Groundhog Day is an amazing, brilliant comedy movie. And I think that the fact that I would be isolated, stuck in probably a similar routine day in, yeah. day out for like six months a year, that Groundhog Day reinforcing that would be the perfect comedy movie in some aspects but also maybe could just drive me a little batty and a little nutty because it would be a little too close to home. Sure. So that's why it's an honorable mention and not the top spot. Uh, My other honorable mention is the Blues Brothers. I love this movie. Being from Chicago and it's based in Chicago, it's a great comedy movie. It almost got the top spot. It's got great music. It's, It's literally a comedy musical. Um, It's... It's perfect on so many levels for me, but ultimately it's going to lose out to my number one, which is actually my number one comedy movie of all time. I can literally watch this thing every freaking day. I don't think anybody's surprised. 
Ghostbusters. Yep. <laughs> Ghostbusters for me, if I'm isolating all other comedies, and there's some great comedies, um, I I can watch Ghostbusters every single day, and right. I can and I can laugh at it, and it's never going to get old. So if I'm isolating comedy, Ghostbusters is my pick. Everything else has got to nice. stay stay away for a while. Nice. All right. I like. I mean, Ghostbusters was on mine, but I was like, I know Spencer's going to at yeah. least mention that movie. Yep. And uh, and then when Father Bride came up, it was just that was easy for yep. me. All um, right. What do you got for drama? So <clears throat> this one was a little more difficult because I wanted to find something that didn't really overlap with anything else. You know, because uh, drama for me is a weird category. Yeah, I don't watch a lot of drama TV shows, and I don't really know what a drama movie is. And then I started I had to like look it up. Like, what does it even mean? Sure, because I just don't watch them if there's not a comedy or an action. Anyway, long story short, uh, it came to do a lot of war movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of fell into the drama category. So I was thinking of my favorite war movies, and I was like, well, 1917 was so good, and I could watch that over and over, and then. The movie like Hacksaw Ridge, which was just incredible. But it came down to these two movies. And Jesse, my wife, is the reason I thought of the winner. Um, Because when I realized that that was... Anyway, long story short, my second place... um, I just forgot it. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. The winner... (laughs) No, I remember now. Big Fish was the second place in the drama. That's the you and McGregor. You McGregor, yeah, yeah, Tim yeah. Tim Burton. Um, just I watched that movie this week. Actually, that's a good and movie. I was, I was in bed, kind of finishing the movie because I have to kind of watch movies in chunks when I'm working because I can't focus. And I finished it up in bed. It was like 11:30 at night, and I am like heaving in crying tears of sobbing sadness yeah. because that movie kills me every time I watch it. But the ultimate winner in this category, which probably many of you have either never heard of or never seen, is a movie called The Way, Way Back. Yeah, you've told and me about this. Yes, this is, and I will tell you about it again and again and again oh, until you please watch do. it. It is such an incredible movie that nobody knows about. And it's weird because it has like Sam Rockwell, Steve Carell, uh, Tony Collette, um other famous people that make cameos oh jim rash is in it as well so there's a bunch of you know famous people in this movie but it kind of was an independent-esque film yeah um anyway long story short this is one of my favorite movies of all time and maybe it's because it surprised me so much because it got little to no press but this is this is one of my favorite movies it's a coming-of-age movie about like a teenage boy and uh his jerk potential soon to be stepfather who's steve corral playing a drama role he is not funny at all in this movie ever he is a total d-bag and you hate him the whole time and tony collette plays his mom and it is him working at a water park that's kind of owned and operated by sam rockwell's character and jim rash is an employee and uh what's her name maya rudolph uh-huh. she's in it as well and really? she looks at the at the uh at the water park and it is just a great coming of age movie. It's so funny and so fun and it's a great drama. You got to watch it. It's, okay. it's kind of a comedy, but I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the drama category. because it's, Is it a dramedy? I would say sort of. Okay. I'd say it's mostly a drama though. It's that's, great. That's, I mean, that's fine. Like I said, it's great. Blues brothers is a comedy, but it's kind of like a comedy musical. And that almost yes. was my number one. So, <laughs> I right. get that. It's okay if a movie kind of, you know, blurs the line some. I'm fine with that. All right. All right. For my dramas. Oh, this was, uh, I, I had to do some thinking too, because a lot of dramas that I like fall into a couple of categories. One, it's family-esque drama. Two, it's war type of drama. I think that's really it. Those are kind of the, yeah, like the same. Yeah. I mean, I also do like the dramas that are kind of like political thrillers. Uh, this wasn't an honorable mention, but things like 
uh, all the president's men about the Watergate scandal or the the post, which was done just recently, which is about the Pentagon Papers that like happened okay. right before the uh, the Watergate scandal, stuff like that. Like I really like that too. But for my drama, the last place of my honorable mentions is a very tough movie for me to watch. I love it dearly. But the reason why I left it as an honorable mention is that if I were watching this movie by myself, it was the only movie drama I could watch, it would emotionally, I think, wreck me too much. Okay. And so I wouldn't be, like, it would be just too hard to, like, go through that kind of emotional turmoil over and over and over again. And that's the movie Field of Dreams. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. And I used to watch that movie a ton. But then after my dad died, I tried watching that movie and it just it just ripped me emotionally in a way that I was not expecting. And I still love that movie. But man, that that last 10 minutes of that film, mm, Mm. I'm just a puddle. I just cry. Mm. And so I I didn't want to imagine myself for six months, a year (laughs) crying every single time I watched it. So it didn't that it didn't get the top spot. Saving Private Ryan, out of all the war movies, I think right. that that is the one that's my favorite. And I've got a lot of really good ones. Right. That's close. This one that almost made it is a feel-good movie. It's old. It's black and white. But It's a Wonderful Life. That movie yeah. is so good. Like, it runs the uh, it runs a range of emotions. You know, you've got this whole story about this, you know, guy that's coming up and then he sacrifices for his family and he gets to a point where he realizes he thinks his life, his life would be better off serving his friends and family if he wasn't, if he wasn't alive. Right. And then he has to be shown that and then come back and just the, the redemptive feeling of like, no, my life has value. Like there's a lot, there's a lot packed into that movie. Uh, my last honorable mention is the movie Rocky. About a man. I thought of Rocky too. Did you? Oh, I about, did. About this Creed, man because Creed who was excellent. Wants to overcome, yeah, all of the things that have kind of stood as roadblocks in his life. People tell him he can never do it. You know, him not being the most talented of guys, and he gets to the point where he says, "All I want to do is I want to stand toe to toe with the champion of the world and give him everything that I got, and I just want to make it to the end of the fight." I'm not even trying to win. I just want to make it to the end and be standing at the end. I just want to stand up and ooh, that movie. Now the only, the only downside about that movie is, is that it's dramatic. It's very good, but that first one can be very, very slow by today's standards, even with drama. So, but my number one, I think if I'm isolating everything else out, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit longer because I needed it to fill up more of my day. <laughs> I wanted something that I felt was good. It tells a good story. But this kind of hits kind of the history buff in me. It's a period piece. And it does involve my man Kevin Costner. It's the movie Dances with Wolves. Hmm. I think that that's a movie that I've watched probably a couple hundred times. It's like a three, three and a half hour movie. You know, it starts in the Civil War. It's about this guy who ends up going out to the frontier and he's all alone. He's isolated, which probably maybe not the best, but he falls, you know, he he gets his friendship, uh, falls into this friendship with this wolf. And then by the end of the movie, his world kind of comes crashing back down on him and civilization kind of, you know, comes back in on him. And it's it changes up his whole world that he's got used to while living in this isolation and I think that that would be a really kind of interesting dynamic of a movie to watch. It's a great drama. Drama. It's got Kevin Costner back when Kevin Costner was in his heyday. But it's like a three, three and a half hour movie. So it's going to suck up some of your day because let's yeah. be honest, you're going to have lots of days. So right. I went with Chances with Wolves. That was that was my pick. Nice. Very nice. I've actually never seen that movie. Oh, it's so I'm gonna good. Have to, I'm going to have to look into it. So... This next category was just action like, adventure. What am I going to choose here? Because it's bonkers. There's way too many this things to choose from. I, this is where I live is in the action adventure category yep. and the comedy. But I mean, I went through every possible 
movie, I feel like, because all of them fit this. I, all, all the Marvel movies, right? You could go from top to bottom Marvel and you could say, oh, my gosh, what's my favorite Marvel movie? Gosh, I don't know. Right. And then I was yeah, there's so many. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Categories of movies that you can go through. So this was shockingly difficult. Um, and I'm not even comfortable with what I settled on. Honestly. <laughs> OK. Um, this is really tough. But what it came down to was either, and I didn't choose this one, so Endgame was really high up there. Yeah. I really like that movie. And it makes me feel emotions. And I want to feel emotions when I'm isolated and quarantined. The next one that I didn't choose, and this is the one where it was like flip of a coin. It was either this one or the one I'm going to say is the one I'm going to take with me. The Fellowship of the Ring. Ooh. That movie is so great, and we we talked about it for a whole podcast a few months ago. Right. It's so good. I mean, it's like, but I didn't want to have, I didn't want to not be able co- to complete the trilogy. Yep. Like, that's just one part of it. And that, and then I'm going to contradict myself because this is part of a trilogy as well. <laughs> the one that I did choose. So I chose The Dark Knight. Okay. The Dark Knight is absolutely, hands down, in my opinion the greatest superhero film ever. Wow. I I am a huge fan of the Christian Bale, Christopher Nolan trilogy. The Dark Knight Rises isn't great, but The Dark Knight to me is like the pinnacle of cinema almost in the way that the acting is so on point. Heath Ledger as the Joker is, is so excellent. Mm -hmm. so excellent and that's not a knock on anybody who has played joker in the past and we've had some really great jokers right really good ones jared leto not among those but (laughs) everyone else pretty much is but caesar Um, romero from the 60s he's the man hey man better than uh, anyway (laughs) this to me has everything it has so much action so much fun so much dread and scary and because i like to kind of feel on edge every once in a while and a little bit creeped out and just like Keith Ledger's Joker is so disturbing yeah that it's it's it makes you just I don't know I love it it's a great movie that's what I would choose it's one of my favorite movies ever so it's interesting that you brought up like the trilogy type stuff because I tried thinking because I can make it really easy and I could pick things like oh it's gonna be an MCU film or it's gonna be a Star Wars film or something like this But I started thinking, I don't want to pick a film that's tied into a greater universe because I know that those other films exist and I have to isolate them. Right. And so I think it would be hard, like watching like Endgame, knowing that, you know, you can't watch Infinity War to lead into Endgame or you can't watch Far From Home that kind of, you know, is the denouement of the the whole like overarching Thanos story. Like I, I tried staying away from that kind of stuff. So... While my movie that I did choose is part of a larger trilogy of films, you know, a quadrilogy of films, that sort of things, this movie actually stands out on its own. If you just watch this movie, you would never know that there's going to be other movies in this Mm -hmm. series. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit up my honorable mentions. Die Hard. Greatest Christmas movie (laughs) of all time. It's got action. It's got adventure. It's got wonderful quotes. It's got some comedy in it great the born identity that one is a great action adventure type of movie and stands on its own you don't know there's going to be a sequel uh if you're just watching this inception is my last of the honorable mentions okay i love that movie it's layered it's got things to think about but there's so much action and stuff going on but my action adventure movie, if I'm isolating everything else out and I can only pick one, is Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a good one. That movie has got everything you could ever want in it as far as action and adventure. It's, it's got great dialogue. It's full of action. It's enticing. It's exciting. It's got scary stuff in it. It's got this wonderful dichotomy of like, the villain is clearly an identifiable villain. It's the Nazis, and you do not want the Ar- Nazis getting the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And then at the end, the way it ends, it just leaves you going, oh, man, like, I could watch that one. 
isolate that one, isolate everything else out. I got that. Okay. I like it. That's a that's a great choice, and I can't say anything against that, because that's a good one. Um, so the next category is romance, and this yeah. proved to be sh- so difficult for me. I, I, I had a hard time, a really hard time, because I don't... I used to watch a lot of like romantic comedies in college, believe it or not, like not with girls, just because oh, I, I liked them. I, I believe and it. I you watched like The Bachelor. I, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like romantic comedies, and I watch all the romantic comedies with my wife on Netflix and Christmas time and all that. But I was like, those aren't. I don't know about. I had a really hard time with this. Is what I'm trying to say, and I, I the only honorable mention that I have is Fever Pitch. Okay. With Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, the baseball movie. That's, yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the main reason why. I like the movie. Yeah, it's baseball. Ties in my favorite things. <laughs> right. Sports and Jimmy Fallon. And I guess more romance. But uh, Drew Barrymore. Um, yeah. So that's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. I mean, if you like Jimmy Fallon and you haven't seen that movie, I'm surprised. Just watch it. It's, it's a really fun movie. And I thought about that because that's probably my favorite, like, romantic comedy. Okay. Uh, but I went with, I don't know if this is really a romance, but I went with a movie called, again, I don't know if many of you have seen this movie called The Family Stone. Oh, I know that movie. That movie is, it's for me, this is a must watch at least once. At Christmas time? November to Uh December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you don't, if I don't watch this. That's never happened, actually, since I've seen it. So that's never happened, and it probably never will. I love The Family Stone. It is funny, so it's got kind of the comedy portion. It's not really a comedy. I think it's more like romance drama. Yeah, it's got a lot more family dynamics in it. This is another one that gets me to cry almost every time I watch it. Uh, it's it's there's so many parallels with my own family when I watch this movie, I feel like as well with we all get together and it's, it's a really good funny, but also dramatic and real kind of true to life movie that makes you feel things. And, and it's also a Christmas movie and I needed one Christmas movie in here because what if I'm quarantined during Christmas, I need to have one. True. So the Family Stone was was the movie I ended up choosing, and it is kind of one of my overall favorite movies, regardless of category. So that one, when I thought of it, I was like, "Okay, that's the one I'm going to go with." Okay, but it's hard. I like that. I like that. I I had a hard time with the romance. When I tell you my romance one, it's pretty Iffy. much yeah. The, <laughs> it is a romance movie. However, it definitely has. A heavy comedy, heavy action adventure vibe with it as well. That's Princess Bride. It Not is the Princess is. Bride. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I so thought of the Princess Bride too, but I was like, is that too much in the action adventure I, like see, comedy? Okay, so that's it, funny. Let me go through my honorable mentions. Casablanca. That's just right. classic romance. Uh, it's got a good story. Once again, period piece history, which is I love that. The greatest love story ever told is apparently Romeo and Juliet. But if I'm going to pick a movie, I don't want to watch the Romeo and Juliet, but I would watch West Side Story, okay. which is a more modern yeah. reinterpretation of Romeo and Juliet. And it's also a musical, so it gives you a little something extra. You know, Sharks and the Jets, man. Yeah, um, man. And then, of course, my last one, and this is definitely more on the drama side of romance. It's Silver Linings Playbook. About two huh. really broken people who end up finding love with one another in a very disjointed, broken, dysfunctional way. And for some reason, there's some part of me that just really enjoys that movie because huh. I, I think that the ideal of like, you know, Prince Charming and Sleeping Beauty and like all the kind of the way that the romance yeah. love is romanticized. Is not really how romance and love always is? Sometimes it's, it's dirty and it's broken and it's messed up and it's weird, but mm-hmm. people can find each other in like these harsh circumstances. And that was almost my number one, but it's like, if I'm going to okay. be isolated and I can only watch one from this category and I've got to isolate all the others, I was like, 
I need something that's not as hard and heavy. So I okay. went with Princess Bride because it is a love story. It's about a boy who loves a girl but knows that he can't have her until he can prove himself to be more than what he is. So he goes off on this adventure and then he comes back to win her. But while he's been gone, things have changed. It's kind of like the story of the Odyssey in a way. And I think that uh, it's it's a pretty strong mix of comedy. It's a pretty strong mix of action adventure. But if I'm going to watch a romance movie, having a strong hit of comedy and action adventure yeah. in it for six months a year, I think that's right up my alley. That's a great choice. I, I mean, I, I toyed with it and went, I'll go in this other direction. But that one's that's a good one. That's yeah. a really that's a really good movie. I haven't seen that in a while. I need to go back. And I watch think it's that. awesome. That I you have t- it. I think it's awesome Blu-ray. that you guessed that, watch. though. That's funny. Um, <clears throat> so the sci fi category. Yep. This one initially I thought was going to be really easy for me, but then it's turned out to be really difficult for me. And I'd still, as I'm talking right now, I don't know what I'm going to pick. So I'm going to let you go first because okay. I still don't know what I'm going to pick. This for me was actually very easy because once again, I didn't want to pick anything that was part of a bigger, broader thing unless it could stand out on its own. So for me, I love The Empire Strikes Back. It's my favorite mm-hmm. Star Wars film. However, if you watch this, you know that another movie came before it, and the way it ends, it definitely leaves it off, so there has to be something to follow it. Right. I'm not going to want to deal with that for six months to a year. So I didn't pick anything like that. So, honorable mentions. Wrath of Khan, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. It doesn't, you really don't need to see Star Trek, the motion picture. The way it ends is perfect. Like, there could have never been uh, Star Trek Three: Search for Spock. And it could have just been perfect. It's a great film. It's one of my favorites. It is Stu Jones's absolute favorite movie of all time. Former co-host of the podcast. So Wrath of Khan's an honorable mention. The first Back to the Future movie is great. It's sci-fi in the fact that it's one. time travel. And it's a great movie. I could watch that. That one can kind of stand on its own. Because when it first came out, There was no to be continued. They actually added that back in later. So that could be another honorable mention. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Jurassic Park was up on mine. Jurassic Park is a great sci-fi film. Scientists that bring back dinosaurs and then dinosaurs like take control. Oh, that's a great one. Honorable mention. My last honorable mention. One of my dad's favorite sci-fi movies of all time. It is a wonderful sci-fi movie in its own right. It almost gets my top spot. It was almost a coin flip. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is a movie about aliens who come to Earth to make contact and about this man who like has this experience and then he's on this quest to find out what's going on and what everything means and... In the end, you get to see that aliens from outer space make first contact with humankind and with the government, and they're there, and they're, they find a way to communicate back and forth. It's a great, great sci-fi movie, and it's Steven Spielberg, and it's back from like the 80s. I mean, it's just yeah. fantastic, but I got to put all those aside because the one that I'm going to take into isolation with me is the original Terminator movie. Oh, okay. This movie is pure, pure sci-fi at its best. This is, it's a low budget film. This is not big budget T2, which was more action adventure. This is about a time traveling robot sent from the future to come back into history to kill the mother of the human resistance. She's going to, you know, give birth to a child that will become the leader of the human resistance, and this machine comes back from the future to kill it. But then the leader of the human resistance sends back a human to warn her and protect her. It's time travel. You get the whole thing of, you know, the human that comes back ends up falling in love and has a one-night affair with the mom and ends up becoming the father of this child that will become the thing. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger's big debut. It is... It's got action in it. It's got time travel 
probably be one of the coolest time travel stories of time travel stories. I love that movie. Everything about it is just perfect sci-fi. It does, it's not overblown big budgets. It's not crazy, hard to follow, convoluted storytelling to try to get to some like really cool point at the end. It's just straight up sci-fi gold. I'm choosing the Terminator. Okay. I didn't see a lot of those choices coming. I thought Ooh. this was so, um, I, uh, as you were talking, I think I settled on one. Okay. I But this was hard. This was hard for me because initially I went, okay, it's going to be Star Wars, but which one? Right. And so I kind of, <coughs> excuse me, I started to kind of go through them and I thought, okay, Empire Strikes Back is, is easily the, the best Star Wars movie. Right. But is that what I want to take with me like right now? If I were going to go into quarantine right now and, uh, and then I went, okay, well, controversial take, The Last Jedi one of my favorite movies, but then I went, there are points of that movie that I really hate. Like I hate it. Right. Like some of the worst parts of star Wars are also in the last Jedi, which is my second favorite star Wars movie. So I'm okay. No, because I can't deal with being angry at Holdo again. I can't do it. <laughs> right. So I, I said, okay, not the last Jedi. And then when we were talking, I was like, okay, is it going to be solo a star Wars story, which is again, a great entry underrated because no one got to, Everyone was so pissed about The Last Jedi. They didn't get to see this one, and it was so good. Sure. And it's and I think I want it also because it's new. It's got great special effects. It's got good acting. It's fun. It's got like a heist feel. It's got a lot of things going for it. And then I went, nope, I'm going with Signs. Ooh. And Signs is is a just a great movie. Yeah. Just an overall. Just It's got everything that you kind of want in a movie with the comedy the sci-fi, the drama, the horror, the suspense, yeah. the questions, aliens, the, the aliens. I mean, it, it, for me, it brings things in full circle, especially as a as a religious man myself. It it is pertinent, you know. I mean, he's a pastor at the beginning, and he loses his faith after his wife dies, and everything is random. You know, he's it's it's a, it's a broken man whose brother moves in with him, Joaquin Phoenix. Come on. It's got Joaquin yeah. Phoenix in it. The acting is so fun, so so great. The movie is scary, suspenseful. It's I, I love it. I love it. And at the end you come out on the on the other side of the movie feeling good. Which you can't say for a lot of you can't say for all movies in general. It's sure. Not kind of sure. suspense, horror. Because M. Night Shyamalan is famous for his kind of I wouldn't even call them a horror, but suspense horror kind suspense. of thing he's yeah. got going on. And uh, this is, to me, his best. I love it because it, it just has that, it has so many layers and depth. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I also noticed as I looked over my sci-fi choices, just, just to take a look at the genres that I picked, okay? I've got time travel, dinosaurs... Aliens and killer robots. It's great. And war, battle, you know, in, in space. Of course. Space battles. Uh, all of those are like super sci fi. Like, none of them like were like, you know, genre, you know, br- you know branching off a little bit or blending right. the lines. Yeah. Anyway, so let's, let's recap real quick here. What, what were your five movies? Yep. So, comedy, Father of the Bride, drama, The Way, Way Back. Action Adventure, The Dark Knight, Romance, The Family Stone, and Sci-Fi Signs. And mine was Comedy Ghostbusters, Drama Dances with Wolves, Action Adventure, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Romance, The Princess Bride, and Sci-Fi, The Terminator. Did you pick everything from the 80s? Uh, I'd like to say no, but I think yes. Is I'm the pretty sure answer. Go- every single Ghost- one of those movies Ghostbusters is, is early 80s. Dance with Wolves yep. is like... 88 Raiders of the Lost yep. Ark is mid 80s, early yep. 80s. Princess Bride, mid ish, <laughs> late 80s. And Terminator is <laughs> early 80s. Yeah. Yep. Everything's from the 80s. Now, oh, I will say though, in my defense, Groundhog Day, an honorable mention, was in the 90s. Rocky was a late 70s. It's a Wonderful Life was like the 30s, 40s. Uh, Saving Private Ryan 
90s, Field okay. of Dreams 90s, Inception was the 2000s, Born Identity was the 2000s, Die Hard was yeah. okay in 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serve Light and Playbook, living... yeah. I had other stuff, it just <laughs> happened to be that my choices were all from the 1980s. Yep, yep. You'll be lacking in the special effects department. If you would have said like teen teen movies or something, I would just say like The Breakfast Club right off the top of my head. Right. Because I know it's yep. an 80s movie and it's like quintessential, right? Yeah, anyway. Uh-huh, of course. <laughs> so so anyway, the, the, those, uh, that's funny. Those are our five picks in those categories for movies. If you got to quarantine everything else in those categories and you're only taking five for the next six months to a year, what are you going to watch? So our question, Super Friends, to you should be really obvious. You're quarantining all other movies. What are five movies you're going to take with you into isolation for six to 12 months? And let us know at all those usual places. I am dying to hear uh, what you're what you're going to watch. You can go with the same categories we did. You can not go with categories and just pick five movies. You can... Add a couple more categories on. If you're a hardcore musical person and you feel like you have to have a musical and you want to swap that out for action adventure because you don't like action adventure, do that. I don't care. Five movies that you're going to isolate yourself with for the next six months to a year. And we'll hear from you next week. Matt, this was a lot harder than I thought. Yeah, I thought this. I thought this would be easy, but I had to, I had to give it a lot more thought. But I'm glad we did this because... Now I've got a list. I know. I know what it is. <laughs> That's true. Whenever we're <laughs> questioned with this, we'll know exactly what we're going to pick. If I'm if I'm ever stopped by the police, I'm like, what are your five movies? I'm like, oh, well, here, let me pull out my notes. <laughs> anyway, uh, from all of us here at the Fortress of Nerditude to all of you out there, wherever you may be, may the force be with you always.